Hi, Aaron from Card Access here. Have you ever found yourself on an install only to figure out you can't run an IR control wire? Or maybe you simply forgot to run one? Well, that's no problem anymore because you can easily add every TV, set-top box, ceiling fan, window covering, or any other IR control device to your installation. All you need is a Control 4 driver for each device and the new Z2IR Zigbee to IR module from Card Access. Z2IR's name tells you exactly what it does. It carries infrared or IR codes over the Control 4 Zigbee mesh network to the IR emitters plugged into it. What's the big deal about that, you ask? Well, it's simpler, faster, and safer than home running a wire back to a controller. There's no drilling, no fishing wires, and no running into stuff behind the wall. And you'll have happier clients. In the few minutes it'll take you to watch this video, you'll be completely trained on how to install the Z2IR in your Control 4 projects. All you need to do is sit back and watch. So let's rock and roll. The Z2IR module is small. It's 2 and 13 16 inches tall by 1 and 3 quarter inches wide. It's just over half an inch thick, making the Z2IR smaller than a standard pack of chewing gum. The edge of the Z2IR has two IR ports labeled 1 and 2. You can plug any standard IR emitters with a 3.5 millimeter mono jack into these ports. The Z2IR is powered through this mini USB port. The Z2IR is not a USB storage device. Its USB port is for power only. On top of Z2IR is an identification button for identifying it into your Control 4 project. This button also doubles as an LED for information and diagnostics. Inside the Z2IR package, you'll find the Z2IR module, the quick start guide, a 110 to 220 volt mini USB power supply and cable, and two true, and yes, that means they're invisible, IR emitters. These non-flashing emitters are marked with red labels. If you want to use Control 4's red flashing IR emitters, they'll work just fine as well. Let's go through the four easy steps to get the Z2IR installed. First, install the Z2IR hardware. We'll show you an example in a moment. Second, add the Z2IR module and identify it in your Composer project. Third, configure the Z2IR module settings. The default settings will usually just work just fine, but we'll explain each of the settings anyway. And last, just bind the Z2IR's available IR ports to the target device it will control. To install the Z2IR hardware, go to the target device you want to control. In this example, we'll use a TV. Just remember, Z2IR works with any device with a Control 4 IR driver. First, power up the Z2IR module by plugging it in. If you're not using the supplied USB power module, be sure the USB port you're using provides constant USB power. If the inside of the USB port is yellow, it will provide power even when the device is turned off. The first time you power up Z2IR, the identification button LED is solid red, meaning it is not connected. Second, plug in the emitter or emitters into the Z2IR's IR ports. Remember, they're numbered one and two. Using the supplied Velcro, attach the Z2IR module to the back of the TV. Because it's small, you can place it just about anywhere. Just be mindful of the USB and IR emitter wires placement. Finally, Attach the IR emitter head over the target device's IR receiver. And now you're ready to install the Z2IR driver and identify it in Composer. In this scenario, we'll be adding the Z2IR to the master bedroom to control a new TV. Highlight this. You'll need to add the Z2IR driver, which you can find in the search tab, selecting the online database, leaving the device type as others, and selecting card access as the manufacturer. If you expand the name category, you'll be able to see the Z2IR right here. Double click the Z2IR, and that will drop the driver right into the project. Now, we need to identify the Z2IR. Go to the Connections tab, then Network. Find your Z2IR driver. Right now, as the Z2IR has been plugged in, you'll see that the LED light is solid red. This indicates that it is not connected with the Zigbee network. When you identify it, use the standard four click and it will flash amber, then a quick green flash when it's found the network. After it's identified, it'll go to a solid green state showing that it is now online. Once you've identified the Z2IR, you can configure it on the properties page. I'll explain each relevant option. First, there's Zigbee connectivity. This is the default setting. 
What this setting does is show you whether it's connected or not. If it's completely blank and this setting is selected, then the Z2IR is likely not powered on. If it's solid red, it is not yet identified. And when it's solid green, it shows that it's identified and on the network. The next option is LED off. This setting will entirely turn off the LED on top of Z2IR. This can be handy if the Z2IR is mounted on the back of a television, uh, perhaps pointed at a wall, that you don't want the light to splash on the wall. The third setting is IR port activity. With this setting, it will be blank most of the time, but will flash green anytime the Z2IR is receiving an IR code that it's transmitting to the device you're controlling. With all of these settings, make sure you press the set button to keep the setting, otherwise it won't be saved. You won't likely use any of these other options down here, but we do make the information available for memory used on each of the sectors before it starts dropping cache commands. The next step to installing the Z2IR is to bind your proper Z2IR ports to the target device you want to control. In this case, a TV. However, keep in mind, it can be any other device with an IR driver. So first, we'll select the Z2IR module. It has two IR outputs. In this case, we're just going to use output number one. You'll grab output number one and drag and drop it down onto the master television, which we're using in this example. And just like that, you now are able to control the master TV. Making these IR connections are just the same as any other IR binding you'd make in Composer. Z2IR has two known limitations. First, it's not compatible with the Control 4 driver wizard because the driver wizard doesn't offer access to Z2IR's IR ports. The driver wizard only sees IR ports associated with Control 4 home controllers. Second, Direct Connect IR, that is wires with mono plugs on both ends, are also not supported by Z2IR. If you're wondering just how Z2IR works, I'll briefly explain. The Z2IR module caches the IR commands transmitted to it via the Zigbee mesh network. The first time a command is issued, it is cached, so the first use of a new command can take a few milliseconds longer. Subsequent uses of the cached commands are really fast because the Z2IR has dedicated processors for each IR port. This makes it exceptionally quick. If the Z2IR module's cache fills, the least recently used commands are overwritten by the new commands. Deleted IR commands are simply recached the next time they're used. Just note that we've put a lot of memory into the Z2IR, so you should never run into this problem. But you wanted to know how it works, so... There are many infrared accessories that will work with Z2IR. These include IR blaster emitters that can be powered by Z2IR's 15 milliamp LED drive, 3.5 millimeter mono jack splitters, just be sure to use an identical IR emitters coming out of the splitter. Multi-headed IR emitters that are wired in parallel and can be powered by Z2IR's 15 milliamp drive. These include both double and triple headed emitters. If you need to use more than three IR emitters per port, you'll need to add an additional IR amplification block. The Z2IR driver supports these devices, but the additional power from the amplification block's power supply is required for them to work. If you're not sure if something's going to work, go ahead and give it a try and let us know what you find out. If you'd like to learn more about the Z2IR module, there are plenty of resources on the Card Access website. Just go to www.cardaccess-inc.com forward slash automation. Click on the Products tab and look for Z2IR. There are links to the Z2IR datasheet, quick start guide, and a link to our product introduction webinar that talks about how to add Z2IR to your business. Thanks for watching and thanks for using the Z2IR module from Card Access.